Hello YouTube, this is uh, Alan Samsel, welcome to Alan's Cloud. Um, it's going to be my uh, latest video, I had a pause there for several months uh, due to some sickness. I was, you know, had a cold for about four weeks and nobody wants to see or hear that. And uh, then we had the holidays and uh, after that just work and everything else got in the way. But uh, I'm trying to get back into the swing of things here with a, uh, a new video about something called Teapot. Um, I found it recently and uh, created a virtual machine in Proxmox and um, I want to kind of run you all through the settings of that, not necessarily through the installer, but um, want to at least show you what it does. It's a, it's a honeypot. There are actually several of them all wrapped into it and a couple of different ways you can run it, uh, either internally or externally. So uh, I'll, I'll run you through how I set it up and why I set it up the way that I did. So uh, if you're interested in, um, you know, kind of seeing who is trying to potentially attack your system, stick around. This, this video is for you. So uh, first, um, what is teapot? Uh, teapot is a honeypot, and a honeypot uh, catches flies. And in this case, uh, the flies are, are anybody who's trying to use various exploits against uh, your systems there's the script kitties out there or you know genuinely people that know what they're doing uh, they're trying to find computers with open ports uh, out on the internet and uh, so they're they're constantly running scanners and sometimes that's a focused attack uh, just on you uh, most of the time it's just kind of spread spectrum until they find something that they're looking for um, so this these uh, honeypot was was born or uh, teapot specifically puts several of these honeypots together and the idea is uh, you know either you're studying computer security or you're genuinely interested in uh, who's coming after your particular um, you know inter internet IP address maybe you're just you know kind of curious and um, it uh, teapot puts all of them together and uses a, a program called Kibana to show all of the information in, in you know very very uh, beautiful displays for lack of a term um, it's uh, very useful very visual and uh, I'll, I'll show you that in a minute but let me let me just show you their website here real quick uh, or the website for teapot itself and uh, so you can go to this uh, github address here um, and uh, scroll down here Last all the files and their dates and how often they update them. Um, you can see that in this teapot, which uh, version 18.11 here is the latest version. It's based off of uh, Ubuntu. Um, and uh, so you can actually install teapot several different ways. If you have an instance of Ubuntu that you want to install teapot into, you can absolutely do that. Uh, but I, I found that this way with their ready-made... Um, ISO file uh, to create a, a virtual machine inside of uh, my Proxmox uh, platform was the easiest to do it and uh, you can see it's it's all dockerized versions of these particular honeypots um, so you could run these you know individually uh, or you can run this whole teapot program which, which runs all of them and they're they're after specific you know like this one here is a Cisco ASA that's a specific uh, CVE um, that they're trying to exploit and uh, so you know I won't go into all the details but um, the the further things that that you can see here uh, and I'll show you cockpit is the the web UI that they use for it um, you know there's uh, Siricata is actually a uh, uh, intrusion detection uh, you know system that if you're familiar with PFSense, that's actually something that you can install. You can either install Snort or uh, Suricata on there. Um, so that's what's doing a lot of the behind the scenes uh, network monitoring and uh, looking for all these specific instances and kind of tracking you know, who's doing what. Um, down here in the uh, too long didn't read section, you actually see that uh, you can download an ISO file uh, from uh, a different GitHub link and I already have it uh, here, which is what I used. So this 18.11, and this uh, ISO file is, is only 59 megabytes. I mean, this is this is a minimal Ubuntu um, installation file, and um, so what you do is you download that little 59 megabyte file, 
and uh, over in Proxmox, um, you can see here I have uh, several different uh, virtual machines that, that I run. This is my website. Um, that's that uh, Univention corporate server that runs my website. Uh, this is Teapot, uh, and then um, I have a, a Windows virtual machine as a server for um, Plex and a couple of different things. But um, when you... Um, so the first thing for that ISO file is you go ahead and you put that into your uh, local PVE, right? So the content that you have um, uh, in here for ISO files uh, on the, not on the LVM, but on the local PVE itself. I, I, I have hard drives set up as individual hard drives. I don't have a uh, ZFS set up or, um, you know, I don't use RAID. I have mounted individual hard drives uh, individually in Proxmox, which is not usually the way people do things, but I'm a little old school and I like to separate which hard drive is, is doing what. Um, so that's, that's why I have it set up that way. But in the local PVE is where you load all the ISO files that you use to create your virtual machines. Uh, now Proxmox isn't the best, even though I'm on, you know, the latest, very latest version of Proxmox. Um, Depending on the size of these ISO files, you can see um, like this one here for Windows 10, that's uh, 4.3 gigabytes. Well, uh, using the HTTP upload, which is in here, you can you can actually um, upload, hit this button right here, and, uh, and then select that uh, teapot file. And because it's only 59 meg, that will work. It will load in here, and you can see I have the teapot ISO file. But if you're going anything bigger uh, than, say, you know, a, a gigabyte... Um, you know, ISO file, you might want to use something like FileZilla and just put it directly uh, into the, the folder structure uh, onto your um, Proxmox platform itself. Um, that's, uh, for some reason, it errors out on those bigger files, or at least it used to, so I've, I'm very used to uploading them that way. Anyway, um, <laughs> that was a little rabbit trail. Uh, the teapot ISO file here is what you use. You uh, go ahead and, and uh, you know, create virtual machine. You want to give it a name, um, and then you go through the you know the operating system here um, that you're going to use is that uh, ISO file, right? So you go to local, and then uh, you pick the teapot ISO file to to install it from. The Linux uh, kernel that you, that you have there is perfectly fine. Um, the hard drive uh, I left it. Let's see here. Uh, I, I think I did vert IO block here this one um, simply because it is Ubuntu and Ubuntu will support that. Um, I picked the hard drive that I wanted to put it on and the minimum size configuration that they want you to have for this installation and it's back on on the install files is 128 gigabytes. Uh, so I went ahead and I did that uh, and then under CPU I gave it uh, one socket but I gave it two cores um, and then the amount of memory that I gave it was was eight gigabytes. Um, so it says a minimum of six, but eight is probably preferred. And then under the network, um, you know, the the pair of virtualized uh, driver attached to uh, your your regular bridge uh, works perfectly fine. Uh, and then that will run you through when you confirm that, and then you actually turn it on. Um, it will pop up with a. Um, the virtual machine will show up here in the list like I have teapot here and then you actually uh, from there you can um, actually you know start it and then you click console and then and a different box will pop up and you'll actually be able to see the installation and, and actually interact with it with a, a separate window um, for that console and um, so that you want to step through uh, the in installer uh, it's if you're familiar at all with an installer. I don't think I need to walk you through that part, but um, if you want me to, let me know and, and I can um, make a separate video on, on how to actually go through those different settings, but um, it's uh, pretty generic. And then uh, once it's done, it's going to want you to, um, you know, remove the CD drive. And so here you see it says no media. Well, you would go, come back here to the PVE part and, and actually you know, double click on this and come and, and move it from that ISO file will be here for teapot and you will come down here to, to do not use any media. Uh, and then um, you'll reboot it. And then the, the teapot um, virtual machine will reboot and it'll actually set itself up. And then what you'll wind up with 
is I'll show you the virtual machine here in a separate window I have I've already used that console button and this is this is what you end up with and um, so you'll notice your your external IP address of I'll, I'll have blank this out because um, that's my external IP address uh, and then this is how you SSH into uh, the uh, IP address that was you know chosen um, from um, Oh goodness, I can't think of it. Uh, it's just going to pull it from your router. Um, so you can see mine here is, is 153. Uh, and the uh, address uh, for that to get to the um, Kibana, you know, to the teapot interface is this web one here in gray with this particular port, 64297. Now the admin one, they have another button inside of the web ones, but you can go to this one directly. Uh, but that one is actually to interface with Ubuntu itself and, um, you know, the, the, because, you know, the web piece that you're getting into here is actually, um, you know, uh, for Docker, essentially, you know, that's the long and short of it. But, you know, this is a typical login. You can log in just like the admin piece here. Um, and, um, you know, unfortunately, I can't remember what I put as my admin one, but I can get into the web interface just fine back here to the browser and I'll show you what teapot looks like oh um, before I do that yeah the, let's go through the hardware configuration here again eight gigabytes um, one socket two cores um, 128 gigabytes um, I have it set up to start at boot because I want this you know to keep going um, if this helps anybody else, uh, Vertios SCSI, it's the default CBIOS, um, you know, pretty much a normal configuration for a, you know, kind of Linux virtual machine. Um, but uh, so when that thing boots up, you're going to get to here. Um, so the, the web address uh, for 153 for that port uh, that it pulled, um, and then this particular port it's going to come up with a uh, username and login and then once you do that you're you're actually going to come to here um, it's going to show you these different dashboards now you can you know this this little piece here on the side um, I'll, I'll run you through them discover um, this is kind of a uh, a very in the weeds look at a lot of the data that it's collecting um, the visualize here is um, these are particular data tables there's a lot of configuration that you can do for each one of the honey pots that's in here um, but this dashboard here um, each of the honey pots themselves has their own which are individual dockerized versions of it they, they have their own dashboard uh, even the nginx which which is um, you know what's uh, compiling all of these into one lo location essentially um, has its own but the main one that um, is, is useful here is the teapot dashboard so if you click on that one this is what it's going to bring you to uh, and, and it will actually aggregate in these different fields here and show you a map of where um, you know the attacks are coming from the individual IP addresses and who's sending which uh, you know of the different attacks um, so it defaults to the last 15 minutes because if you deploy this thing externally so if you if you make it web facing the world if you're not running a, a website like I am and you're genuinely curious you could put this in a, a DMZ you know the IP address for this particular virtual machine you could put it in a, a DMZ on your router and put it out there in the world and you will see a lot of information show up on here um, but uh, you can you can click the little last 15 minutes and you can select hey how much data uh, do you really want to see and uh, you know useful is maybe the last 24 hours and, and for mine here I'm running this thing internally. I do not put it out there because I am running a website from home, um, you know, just just a basic website, um, nothing special. But I, I, I'm more curious if anybody's inside of my network and scanning, and I'm not aware of it either by getting through my 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 PFSense firewall or because uh, of of one of the. Um, you know VPN services that I'm running is somehow leaking and I, once I open that door one direction somebody's coming back through it these are the kinds of things that I worry about so I'm just running it internally because I, I mean I like it um, 
it thinks that the two of these uh, Cisco ASA attacks have happened, and, and these these happen about every day. But the the unique thing is, is they don't have uh, an internal IP address. They they don't they aren't they aren't coming from anywhere. So uh, somehow it's being flagged, and and you can see all the data here. Um, it goes through and it tells you you know the types of data and and where it's coming from and and if if uh, you ha I had this externally and and people were throwing different usernames and passwords at it, it would show up here in a cloud of of you know the most popular ones in a very very unique way um, and then here it's actually showing you the Siricata, um what it's flagging on um, up here at the top, uh, Cockpit will actually open up uh, a different web page, and this is the admin page. You know, this is this is uh, logging into the uh, Respectable Aquifier was the was the name of the of the uh, uh, machine that I I created there when when I set this virtual machine up. Um, I don't know if you if you're familiar with Docker, it gives them some strange names, but that was kind of pretty interesting. Um, but uh, you know, it, it's this thing is 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 got a lot of data in it. Um, the dashboard here, if I pick, let's see here, I think Engine X will show me anything. Uh, it's saying just in the last 24 hours, I've had 481 unique uh, events with one unique source IP, but that's all me. This is since it's internal, it's picking up everything that's going on inside of my network. Uh, but you can see there's a there's a lot of um, uh, good information here and uh, if you're at all interested in what's going on and 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 who's out there scanning the world this is uh, this is a, a, a very interesting program to run so um, again that's not that's just a general overview I've just gone through of, of how I set up a virtual machine uh, inside my Proxmox environment and why I put it internal I'm not gonna put it out there on the world I'm, I'm not uh, uh, not that interested in, in seeing that aspect of it, but um, you know some people are, and that's that's really what it's made for is is the external piece. Uh, but I'm I am you know it is valid to have it inside of your network to see if anybody's getting through, and I'm pretty pretty satisfied with what I'm seeing so far. Um, so hopefully that helps uh, somebody else. If if you're interested in Teapot, it's a great program, uh, very easy to install, set up and run. And um, yeah, I mean, let me know if you like this video, like the channel, uh, subscribe if you would. I'm still trying to reach that uh, magic 100 number and uh, I'll try to put out more content like this in the future. So um, thanks and uh, see you next time.